Hi, Peter Charles here, Folks for Life Fly Fishing, and today let's talk about fishing cameras. Uh, I know uh, some people like uh, to hear about the type of stuff I use uh, when I'm on the water, and this isn't just for shooting videos, this is also to get pictures for myself. Uh, th the primary camera I've used up until now is this uh, Olympus uh, TG5. I also used to have a TG1 years ago. I think they're up to a TG6 now. It's still basically the same camera, just with internal improvements. Uh, TG1 was a pretty good camera, but the TG5 is really great. Uh, now, one of the things I did with the TG5 uh, is uh, a lot of my fly tying videos use this with this macro function. It can get quite close. I had it mounted here on a, on a tripod or a little stand and um, my flies were tied in front of this camera. So, you know, I've, the macro function on here is quite good. The video is pretty good. Uh, it will, at 1080p, it'll shoot up to about 23 minutes, 26 minutes, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, until that's when it hits that four gigabyte file limit. Uh, the still photos are quite good in it. Um, so I've always been very happy with uh, this. So the TG1 was getting a little long in the tooth on about the TG5 and that's what I carry on the water. Now you notice I've got a wrist strap and when I'm using it, it always goes like this. I never hand, you'll see guys got a wrist strap and they're doing this business. That's a good way to lose your camera, especially on a boat in 20 foot of water. <laughs> bye bye camera. So always get in the habit. And if your camera doesn't have a wrist strap, get one. It's cheaper than replacing the camera. This thing is, uh, I think, waterproof down to about 30 feet, and uh, it's shockproof too. So you can drop it, I think, from a height of something like six feet, and it'll survive. Uh, I what I like about the doors is they're double locked, so you've got two buttons to undo a, a door. You can't undo them accidentally, uh, so that's quite good. And that includes both the um, the side panel here for where the cables go, and the bottom panel for the battery and the uh, memory card. So it's quite a good little camera. There's other waterproof cameras on the market, but uh, in terms of point and shoots, this has got to be one of the best. Okay, this is my GoPro Hero 5, and I have it for a chest mount. Now, uh, I also used to have a hat mount uh, or head mount. And the trouble is with that is if you're turning your head, for the viewer, it's going, your video's doing this, and it's uh, after a while. So, uh, so head mount, head mount, Cameras are okay if you get used to, you know, keeping your head still and having a second camera that you can cut to when you're doing too much of this. Uh, so I use the chest mount. The thing about this is you have to get used to aiming your body. Uh, so when you need to um, look at something and get it on camera, you don't want to turn your head. I'm looking at the fish over here and the camera's going over there. So you have to get used to turning your body, but it's nice and stable. You don't get too much rocky movement that looks nauseating on camera. The other thing too, and I'll hold it like this so you can see, is if I got a fish close to me, I can push it down so I can, you know, videotape the fish being caught and then I can pull it back into position when I'm done and I've released the fish. So that works out quite nicely. And as I say, I've got the chest mount here and there are adapters that would let you put this on the Ch GoPro chest mount. The thing is, it's not sold by GoPro. You have to get them for somebody else, but they do exist. Uh, GoPro doesn't sell them for obvious reasons. Now, this camera is the Hero 5. And I used to have a Hero 7. You know it used to. The Hero 5 does not require a cell phone. The Hero 7 does. I don't know about the 6. May or may not. So when you turn on your GoPro, it looks for a cell phone and a cell phone signal. Then it calls home to GoPro, and if there's an update, it downloads the update. And that happened to me the first time I was using my Hero 7, and it downloaded two updates, and it blew up my data plan. And it was, I was dead for about an hour on the side of the water with no camera because this thing was busy uh, uploading stuff and I couldn't get out of it. I couldn't, if I stopped the camera and restarted, it, it ju just was in a loop and there was no way to get out of it. There was a way to do it at home in through uh, your local network, but that was a lot of a fiddle and it was not obvious and it was, I didn't know this because it was a brand new camera. I had no idea it was going to do this on me. So I'm assuming that eights, nines, tens, elevens, whatever we're up to now, still have that linkage to your cell phone and they require cell phone signal. So 
I check that out very thoroughly before you get something newer than a 5. Uh, you can still find 5s used if you want them. And so, for me, I'll use the 5 until it dies, and when it dies, I'll go look for another 5. I'm not going to use a, a, a camera that demands that I use my cell phone with it, because, you know, that's my decision, not the camera manufacturer's decision. So, apart from that, I'm, uh, you know, relatively happy with this camera, optically, uh, in terms of the video footage. The one good thing about this camera compared to this one is when this hits a 4 gig limit, uh, file size limit, it stops recording. When this one hits a 4 gig file limit, it creates another file. And it'll keep on going until you either run out of battery or you fill up the card, whichever comes first. So that's very good if you're doing long videos. It also lets you shoot 4K. And this, both these cameras shoot 4K, but this one stops after eight minutes. This one keeps on going. So that allows you to shoot 4K, and then when you put it in your editing software afterwards, you can zoom in and uh, you know zoom in on the action and you don't have to live with that great wide angle view you can narrow the angle of the view and get a little closer look at the action without the image going to to, to pot you know because uh, if you zoom in too much on a 1080p image it's going to go to crap but if you zoom in on a 4k image and output is 1080p it actually looks quite good and i do it all the time so that's good now audio the microphone on this is pretty good, providing it's not far away from you. So, you know, you can ha if I had it on a chest mount, and I did have used this on a chest mount, or if I'm holding it in front of me and videotaping and talking, it's actually not bad. It does a reasonably good job. Uh, and uh, I've used a, a lot of um, video over the past with this on a chest mount or the old TG1 on a chest mount. I also had an 860 TG860 as well on a chest mount. And I found the, the microphones were fine uh, when, it, when you're like this distance away. It also does quite a half decent job as a selfie camera too, though it lacks a selfie screen because it's a waterproof camera. The, the TG860, by the way, had uh, a selfie screen, which is interesting. The audio on this GoPro sucks, unfortunately. As you're moving, this case squeaks. And not only that, the frame that goes around the camera is over the microphone. Brilliant design. So as a consequence, this thing is squeaking and it, the microphone is muffled. So if you're uh, using the frame, which you need to put, mount it on something, you've messed up the audio. So I don't know if they fixed that in later versions, but the 5 and the 7 both used the same frame, had the same problem. So uh, that's something to look at to see if that is improved in the later version. So if you're going to buy a brand new one, I'd concentrate on looking at how, how dependent is the cell phone and um, how, what have you done with the audio. But other than that, optically they're fine, image quality is fine, video is fine. As I say, you can keep going continuously until you run out of card or run out of battery, whichever comes first. So quite happy in that sense, not happy about the, the lousy audio and definitely not happy with the uh, newer versions that uh, require the cell phone. There are other action cameras out there. I don't know enough about them to make useful comments, but they're worth checking out. There's GoPro knockoffs plus other manufacturers make action cameras. And so again, you want to check uh, the things I, I would check is can they continuously record because I bought an action camera uh, it was a uh, Rico that did not. So like this camera, uh, uh, the Rico had a, a four gigabyte limit. And when you hit that limit, it stopped recording. So that, that really sucked. So you really have to be careful that the camera will do continuous um, recording past the four gig file size limit. Uh, and uh, GoPros do, you'll have to check for the other action cameras. And the other thing is to check to see about the, the cell phone dependency because, okay, you're on the water, you've got your cell phone out, and you've got your camera going, and you've got your fishing rod in your hand, blah, blah, blah. You end up, something's going to get dropped in the water. So um, I, it's not a solution for fishermen to have to work with your cell phone and the camera and your fishing rod. 
So something to think about. But other than that, you know, I, I've basically used the same formula right from Hero 2s and the TG1 up till today that I work with these two cameras. Uh, this will be on my chest, this will be in a pocket. And uh, that's how I go fishing if I want to shoot video. And if I'm only interested in stills, then I just take this because I don't bother with the GoPro for stills. So there we go. That's how I work with my cameras on the water. Cheers.